Welcome back, everybody. Um, I'm just going to do a quick video tutorial on how to access and use some of the APA formatting resources that I posted on Blackboard. Um, so right now I'm just in just click on content. I'm in our, our Blackboard page. Um, we'll go on, go ahead and click on week three here and you'll see Already there's quite a bit of uh, information up here. We have the lecture, APA formatting lecture for for the week, along with the PowerPoints for that lecture. Um, the lecture is definitely not my most exciting material uh, or the most exciting material for the course, but it's, it's important uh, that, that we learn this. Um, the PowerPoint lectures are there in case you um, are studying or want to refer to to the lecture without having to, to listen to me talk or scroll through um, you know the timeline the slides are up there as well um, I posted up a sample APA format report that kind of breaks down each section um, and what needs to go in it We'll we'll take a look at that in a minute here um, I also have this link to the Purdue online writing lab um, hosted at the Purdue University Library. Uh, it's definitely a great general website in terms of learning basic APA formatting. It's, it's not a substitute for um, the manual itself, but it can be helpful in a pinch or if you, if you, you know, need some, some general um, guidance in there. Otherwise, you'll, you'll have to refer back to to the manual um, you'll see in the the sample report I tell you you know which sections of the manual you should uh, refer to depending on what parts of the the paper or report that you're uh, struggling with there um, really quickly I also posted this psych info uh, video tutorial that will basically um, help give you a really basic introduction to how to use psych info you can see it's uh it's only about 24 minutes long so it's pretty short um, and i just go through where to find it how to access it on the college library um, also how to get more search results the default is to to return 10 results show you how to bump that up to 50 how to um, return only those results that have full PDF articles attached to them and also show you how to uh, narrow down your search using specific quote-unquote subjects or key key terms so that's a good video to watch and um, I think you should definitely watch it before you tackle assignment number one um, and assignment number one deals with using psych info I, I designed it um, not necessarily to be punitive or to to count as a grade it certainly will count as a grade so don't don't blow it off um, but I designed it more uh, as a way for you to get practice using psych info so if we click on this um, assignment you'll see that it has a due date of this Saturday at 11:59. that's keeping with the, the current syllabus um, I'm going to keep this as a soft deadline, meaning that I'll accept uh, assignments after this deadline without penalty, but I'm going to keep this deadline for now just because a number of students said that, uh, you know, having a deadline actually gets them motivated to, to complete the work. So um, I know things are still a little rough. Um, so I won't penalize for, for those of you who, who need a couple days. But when we click on um, the instructions for the assignment, um, it'll open up a Word file that looks like this. Um, get out of here. Okay. So it'll open up a Word file that looks like this. And you basically just need to open up PsycInfo and answer these questions. And you can just type them into into here you know just get rid of these lines type in your answer get the formatting correctly 
Um, all your answers should be in, in proper APA style. So the assignment um, will give you some some help with navigating site info, but also give you some practice with um, putting citations into APA style. But it's basically, let's just say, first question here, uh, an article published in Journal of Memory and Language, and you'll find out what this SO means in a minute once you watch that video. Uh, during 1997, you'll figure out what that PY means. On bilingualism, you'll figure out what that SU means after watching um, that previous video. And there's only one answer, so go find me that article and write it in APA format there. All right, so you'll find a couple of questions like that. It's not a, it's not a very long assignment, and it's not a very difficult one. It really should only take you 20 minutes, half an hour max, I, I would say. Um, maybe, you know, an hour total after having watched the, the Psych Info video first. But that's the, the assignment um, that's due. Um, going back here, let's take a look at that sample. APA report. Actually, before we get to the sample APA report, um, let's click on this link, this APA uh, format general guidelines. So it'll bring up the um, writing lab at, at Purdue here. And trying to get my, my head out of the way there. It's about good enough, I suppose. Um, you'll see it'll let you know some of the general formats for APA guidelines, what kind of font to use, what your title paper uh, should look like, give you some examples of what it actually should look like. I took some of these screenshots to use in our in our lecture. Um, this is the professional paper version. In the lecture, I um, uh, presented the, the student paper um, version, let you know what goes into the abstract, um, so on and so forth. What will probably be most helpful is when it comes to um, in-text citations. So like the mix of in-text citation, I did cover this um, in the lecture. But if you just need, you know, a refresher in terms of how exactly do you cite short quotations and long quotations, which you really should try to avoid using both of those, but sometimes they, they happen. Um, what happens? Uh, when you need to summarize or paraphrase, how how should we recite that inside, um, you know, the text? Uh, so you'll get some information about, you know, when there's more than two authors or three authors, right? Um, again, I state this in our talk or talk about this in, in our lecture, but it's here for you as well, um, especially if you need something quickly. And also when it comes to the references list, citing your references in, in APA format, right? So this is talking about the basics, just how a reference section is laid out um, and some of the basic rules for it. But it'll also um, give you an idea of how to deal with multiple authors and how to deal with single authors and you know, three to 20 authors, right? Um, more than 20 authors, that, that can that can happen uh, in there. But generally speaking, um, for this class, you'll probably be using articles that appear in periodical, so journals, right? So how do you cite journal articles? Well, it'll give you some examples there. So article that appears in a print journal you could get an idea of uh, of what's involved articles that appear appear in uh, electronic journals it'll give you an idea of what kind of information um, that you need to provide articles that appear in a magazine or in a newspaper these are all APA formats so um, you, this page will will help a lot in terms of uh, letting you know how to 
how to uh, write your references in APA format. So articles you'll be using a lot and, and likely a book here or there, right, for um, for your proposal. So again, lots of different options and and how um, you how you should format your references. Some other print sources, other electronic sources. I won't go through all of that. Uh, now you can you can do that on your own time or as needed. Um, if you come across the source and I'm not sure how you should write it out in APA format, you can consult this uh, website, but the APA um, publication manual will be the, the definitive guide in there. So keep that keep that in mind. Um, close out of this and just quickly open up this um, APA format report, this sample APA formatting uh, report here. So let me wait till this downloads and open it up. And you'll see that I tried to um, give you the information that you would need and let you know kind of how things are set up here, right? So for the title page, um, the center title of, of every paper, every first center title of paper, every first letter capitalized, sorry. My mind got jumbled there. Um, so the title will be centered and each letter of the title will be capitalized. Your name, um, your college affiliation, again, everything's going to be double spaced uh, throughout the entire paper. And if you want to know more um, about formatting title pages, you'd go to section 2.3 in the APA manual. So moving on to the abstract, um, we see uh, the abstract gets its own page. So it's on its own page, has a title that's centered and bold faced. And um, it says here to write a concise summary of the key points of your research. You do not indent. Your abstract should contain at least your research topic, research questions, participants, methods, results, data analysis, and conclusions. It may also include possible implications of your research and future work you see connected with your findings. Um, the abstract should be a single paragraph, double space, and it should be between 150 to 250 words, which is not a lot of space uh, to get all that information in. So writing abstracts can be, can be a little challenging. Um, abstracts also sometimes it's up to you um, include keywords and these keywords uh, are basically suggestions to various research databases like PsycInfo of uh, how you think they should categorize your article or what words you think are associated with your article that if people type them in your article should be part of those results um, and you can see how the way how that's formatted. You just indent, italicized uh, the word keywords, and just type in your various keywords with a comma and space uh, between them. So, if you want to learn more about the abstract in general, that's section 2.9 of the APA manual. Um, section labels or uh, 2.28 of the APA manual and keywords are 2.10 of the um, APA manual. Moving along or scrolling down, uh, we get to the body of the paper. This is the introduction where you see that the title is, uh, well, number one, it's a new page that we're beginning here. And uh, the title is centered and every letter is capitalized and the, the title is bolded. Um, there's basic information in here just in terms of a lot of this is repetitive um, from what I've said in, in the lecture, um, the video lecture, so go ahead and watch that. Maybe even watch that video lecture while you're, um, while you got this open so you can kind of follow along in a sense here. Um, but you'll also see the use of a subheading in a title. So if 
or in the introduction if you want to break your literature review or your introduction into um, separate subsections that's also a possibility and this kind of gives you an idea all this uh, information here gives you an idea of how to structure the introduction and um, what kind of information you should include what kind of information is, is mandatory uh, to include right? and then for more information about the the running head which I forgot to mention up here uh, this is the running head it's a partial title that appears in all caps on on your pages there so for more information on the running head that's section 2.8 information about the title 2.4 of the AP manual the heading this little subheading here and the um, introduction that'll be covered in uh, section 2.27 in text citations which I don't have an example of in here but you you'll definitely have those in your in your intro um, those are covered from section 8.31 to 8.36 uh, moving along you see the methods section there's no separate page or anything it just so happens to fall on a separate page but uh, we don't it doesn't get its own page or anything um, you'll see the methods gets its own heading and here also we have subheadings um, in this case participants materials procedures and I give you a, a description of what should be in each of these sections here which I also discussed uh, during the video lecture so I'll spare you um, you know that information again you could read this stuff for yourself um, so when we talk about uh, level one and level two height uh, headings um, this methods would be an example of a level one heading participants an example of a level two heading and to learn more about uh, those differences and and um, how, to, how to how to use them and what kind of formatting is involved uh, check out section 2.27 in the APA manual, uh, they'll discuss headings. I think there's actually a pretty neat chart in there that discusses the uh, different levels of headings. Um, once we get to the results section, again, everything here is just double space. There's no extra spaces between these sections, but results will get its own title that's bolded and centered. Um, again, just some information describing what should go into the results section here uh, that I I won't bore you with by repeating um, you could read this for yourself when you open up the the sample paper and again information relating to level one headings and level two headings you might have level two headings in the results section as well particularly if you wanted to report your all of your descriptive statistics as at once and then all of your inferential statistics separately um those would be level two headings so just refer to sections uh, 2.27 and how you should present statistics um and particularly statistical symbols um in text is covered in section 6.43 of the the apa manual um moving along to the discussion again we see another potential header the discussion might be broken into um, limitations or directions for future research right so you might have separate subheadings in there so again refer to section 2.27 so um, you make sure that you get your your headings uh, your different levels of headings formatted properly and this information here is just giving you an idea um, kind of repeating some of the information that I discussed in the lecture about what should go in the discussion section okay and then the references get their own section um, I only have one example up here and it's for a journal um, and you can see it starts with the author's last name uh, this is for a one author um, publication a publication that has one author um, the author's last name their initials middle of first 
name initial, middle initial, date of publication, which is usually just the year that we put in there for uh, journals. Um, when it comes to the title, everything except for the first letter um, is going to be lowercase. Um, so except for the, for the first letter of the first word. The journal will be italicized along with the volume number, which that name, that term was, I was just having a brain, total brain fart during the lecture. Towards the end of the lecture, you'll see me have a, a bit of a meltdown. I'm like, the hell, what is this number called? I couldn't remember it. Uh, but the volume number and the um, journal name will, are italicized. The issue number will go right alongside the volume number, but the issue number appears in italics. Um, and then you'll have the page numbers that the journal appears on. Those are not italicized. And then you'll have um, the DOI number, if there is one, um, at the end there. So basically all the studies that you cite in, in, this, in your paper um, need to appear here and the reference section um, goes or uses what's known as a hanging indent which basically means that the first line of each reference is left left justified and then any other lines are going to be indented and uh, this is a way to to more easily find um, articles because when we're doing in-text citation, well, let's say if you were citing me or something, it was a Brown 2010 or whatever, um, you would see that in the introduction um, or in the discussion, maybe. And if you're like, I want to find that article, which article is that? You'd be able to turn to the reference page and just look down Brown 2010. Um, so it's an easy way for us to, to find articles. It makes it easy and quicker for us. Um, so this is going to be probably, you know, one of the more annoying parts of APA format, um, just in terms of making sure periods are where they're supposed to be and what's supposed to be italicized and not italicized. But you have plenty of resources uh, available. And then, of course, you always got always got the the Bible there um, for you to refer to when when you're in times of trouble times of need uh, APA manual is there to help you um, figure out how to properly cite your your references no matter which what reference it is it basically has every imaginable reference and how to cite it is is in the APA manual uh, so basically uh, see chapter 9 of the APA guide for details on how to cite sources. See chapter 8 of the guide for examples on how to cite references in texts. So inside your uh, discussion and introductions. And that's basically it for going through the sample APA paper. I just wanted to um, show you this as a follow up to the video lecture and just to um, include this in, in a brief little thing here, less than 25 minutes it seems, um, about the type of APA resources that I, I put online. So um, if the APA manual is a little intimidating for you, don't let it be. Um, I kind of broke it down, this different section said that you will need to know in that sample paper. Okay, that should be it for APA format uh, for me for a while at least. Um, but we'll definitely be using it the rest of this semester and you'll be using it the rest of your academic career if you stay in, in psychology or any of the social or behavioral sciences. Okay, I'll see you all next time when we, we start ethics. Juicy, juicy topic. See you guys.